All right, what's up guys? Matt here from Loon Outdoors and today we're gonna tie a fairly simplistic fly and uh, this is just a little bait fish pattern for float and fly fishing on lakes. Now this is a, a system that works great for bass and trout. Uh, we do this a lot here in Northern California and one of our good friends actually just won a uh, 178 boat tournament utilizing the float and fly technique um, and we'll dive into this little pattern here and uh, let you guys see if you can apply it to some of your fisheries so in the vise I have a firehole sticks 570 size 2 I'll tie this in a size 2 down to mm, maybe a size 8 depending on the bait fish and forage the only thing I don't change is the bead, and this bead is a 4.5 mil tungsten slotted bead in white. You can change the color of the bead if you would like. Um, you can change every color of this fly if you like. Um, it's kind of, uh, you know, do what you like. So after that, I take some 0.25 lead free round wire and what I do with the round wire is I get an older pair of scissors and I just kind of cut one inch sections of it. So I start out with two one inch long sections <clears throat> and these, well, we're going to trim them down to about three quarters. Um, these are going to help me support my bead, but they're also going to help to keel this fly just a little bit. Um, these wraps are not super important down here, uh, but you know you want to make sure that you're securing this non-lead wire in. I'm going to do one more of these little shorties in here, and so we have a total of three quarters of an inch, probably maybe it's still an inch long. Um, of that 0.25 non-lead wire. So you can see we have a good amount of weight here and this is going to weigh in, I do this a lot by weight, um, this is going to weigh in a little bit over a sixteenth of an ounce. There are some bigger tungsten beads on the market that you can use but uh, this is this this presentation, the way that we're doing this, we're hitting we're hitting banks and letting the flies float down to a suspended area and it seems to work really really well. This is some white premium marabou from Hairline. It's the uh, super good stuff. So it has the nice fine tips on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do a few wraps with that there. Uh, you know, kind of create this little tail section. And I'll go ahead and wrap that down, get it as smooth as possible. And from this point forward, we're going to be working with uh, some body materials and then uh, some more synthetics and marabous. So there's a few options here. You can do a sparkle body. You can do a braid body. Um, anything that you really, really want. Uh, sky's kind of the limit. What I like to go with most of the time is my mini flat fly braid in chartreuse, fluorescent chartreuse. A lot, of, a lot of times, uh, right now, our watersheds uh, have moving water sediments coming down with them. And so I'm just going to take a piece of the Mini Fly Flat Braid. It does have some flash built into it. Overwhelming flash on these guys hasn't been super important to me. Um, and I like the 570. Uh, on, some of our <laughs> on some of our big inland reservoirs here in Northern California, we are... Also, I mean, the, on the same day, you could have 40 bass and five really, really large trout to hand. And by large trout, somewhat, sometimes upwards of 20 to 24 inches. So by most standards, that's a pretty big trout. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do some body wraps here. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space up front for the next portion of this fly. 
So as the water gets colder, the fish are far more lethargic. They're probably less inclined to eat uh, a really active bait fish pattern because it would just seem really unrealistic. Most of the time, the bait's going to be moving slow like the fish are. So I'm kind of playing off, a, sort of playing off of a really popular colorway, which is kind of just a spin on Sexy Shad, which is a Bassmaster special color there. And I'm just going to add some light blue, U, or uh, yeah, the, the hot blue UV resin to the top here. Because the our shad, they, they seem to key in on this colorway here in Northern California. So I just do a nice little top coat. And then I want it all to go downwards. So what we'll do is we'll cure from the bottom up. And it doesn't matter if it's a, it's a little bit lumpy. Realistically, this is all getting covered up by uh, some more resin anyways. So I'm going to use some thin, typically use flow but uh, for everything, but thin seems to build a nice little body here. So I'll go over actually the, the hot blue color as well. And we'll just kind of gently rotate that guy. A little bit of a weird cure there. Vice is sticking. Um, so you can see we just kind of build this little body. Nothing major, nothing special. These flies are going to get destroyed and chomped and chowed. Um, next up, I really like this uh, fine black barred marabou feathers in white. It's a heck of a name, but uh, it's... FBM 377 um, and again I'm just pulling from the stem here to get a nice little pinch of material and this is going to create my underbody for this fly so what I'll do is I'll progress nicely forward and wrap that in we'll go ahead and trim that off one fun little hack that I use, this is a, this is just some red schlappen. So I'm going to create a gill plate with it. So I add just a little bit of red to this as well. And you can just mess with all of the variants of this like a hundred different ways uh, as far as colorways and I actually do just I just trim off the top I just palmer it all the way through I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the top of that you can see you're just starting to get this really cool little bait fishy looking thing so I'm gonna use some uh, Senyo's laser hair dubbing I'm gonna use this more as a prop than anything so I, when I pull it out you can see I've got it very well aligned and this is going to be my color variant or a gradient here from a little bit lighter to darker up top and next up up top what I'll do is this is some laser hair and this is in a, uh, a dark olive colorway and this is going to get trimmed as well so I'm not worried about the length right now. This is a four inch length fiber and obviously we're not going to need that much material here. So once I have this kind of right where I want it, I do leave a healthy collar on here. I'm not not too concerned with the collar on this pattern. And last but not least, I just use a little bit of ice stub in minnow belly. Just a tiny touch, like I said, flash isn't my my main uh, purpose here with this with this pattern. Um, I actually kind of dig the chartreuse poking through and sneaking around in there just a little bit more. But so what I'll do is I'm just going to wrap this in and then over. So it just kind of creates a really iridescent baby fish gill plate.
So from there, you can kind of uh, sky's the limit. I'm going to use just a little bit of uh, smoke, which I left in the open window, like a really smart human. Um, I'm just going to use, as you can see, this starts to pull in and look really bait fishy. I'm just going to get some of the smoke resin, and I have to switch out the tip here really quick. And I'm just going to use the smoke up top here just to darken this down just a little bit. We'll go ahead and cure that. And I'm going to see where did uh, go back to my thin here. Um, and we're just going to use a little bit of thin on the bottom to solidify the rest of this collar here. And these flies are kind of silly, and they're pretty basic as far as the tie goes. Um, so I'll just gently rotate that. Once I feel I have a good cure, clean up a little bit of uh, um, what's going on. And then I'm just going to take this, and I want to separate out my marabou for the most part, best I can. And I pull this forward. So the trick that I'm doing here is I pull it back and I see where I want it to end and I'll pull it forward and what I do is I just kind of cut progressively upwards at an angle and that's just going to help me create this killer little bait fish profile. And at the end you can see the tungsten beads, you know, it's going to be tough to get an eye to stick on there if you really, 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 really need an eye area you can go old school crappie fisherman style or you can just leave them however you want but this little guy seems to get bit really well we'll do a little more of a trim work here um, and you can see I'm actually not closing the scissor I'm just using the sharpness to to taper that in but at the end of the day you're just gonna have this killer little bait fish Tons of movement in the water, just a little bit of flash. Nice, subtle presentation uh, for your winter fishing. Hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll catch you next time.